about that. It's one thing to be angry about losing your father due to illness, mortality, but it's a whole other thing. It takes it to another level when that father is present somewhere else, but not in the life of that child. I wish I could, I wish I could get him for five minutes in a room so I could express to him exactly how angry I am about what he did to me. Their egos can't deal with the fact that they've been abandoned. Because I didn't deserve that. It's when we do not deal with the unresolved pain, wounds, scars, and trauma of our childhoods that it's going to come out in an unhealthy way. And it, it, it really hurts to see that, you know, he spends more time with his other children more than me because I am also one of his sons. <laughs> I don't want to admit that all the time. And I think when the father absence leaves that void is that you know that there should be a male presence in your life. And if you don't have that, then, you know, whether it's a sibling or other people in the community, it's this ideal thing that I think should, that's in place with us as a community, as a nation, as a, as a family, that there's a mother and father. Um, and I think children even expect, like if I have a dad, this is what dads do, you know. Um, if you look at, at children's narratives of fathers, you know, children are really idealistic about what dads should be doing, how fathers are different than and how fathers are different than mothers early on. So um, I think children have an expectation of having a dad and that's what dads do. You know, whether it's a superhero or whatever their dad is. And when there's not there, then um, there is this void because children expect, like, I should have a mother and father. Really, for lack of a better word, um, I wouldn't say he hates his father, but he's more like he wants to beat him up. It's like he has that type of anger where I just want to punch you in your face and then maybe give you a hug after that. What would that be? I don't want to say nothing. I'd smack the shit out of me. So far, you. There's no words, no nothing. I'm not saying hello, hi, that, nothing. I'm smacking you. This is personal. There's been times where he has reached out to his dad. Recently. And it's been like now I'm shot down, but you don't know me. But now I'm reaching out to you, giving you a chance to get to know me. And you don't even take that opportunity. And I feel that, like, I don't get a chance to reach out to my dad because he's dead. And even when he reaches out to him, it's like nothing. So I feel like we're in the same boat. Uh, the anger that a young man feels at the absence of his father it is real. It's, it's not a perception at all. And it's... It's really, in the spiritual paradigm of healing, we come from love, and when we don't get the love we think we deserve, we become angry. And angry because the ego drives us, but right beneath the anger is the hurt. But the hurt is what makes us vulnerable, so rather than go there and feel that, we stay stuck in the anger. But if we could just go through the hurt, we'd fall back into love. So very often the young men, the fatherless sons, won't give themselves permission to acknowledge, to feel, to experience, to sit in the hurt. When the truth is they, 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 they need to do that. But because of the fear of being vulnerable or the fear of looking weak or just not having the language or the skills to process the emotion, they stay stuck in the anger and that anger just begins to expand.